All right, blue red tempo. This is a deck that's made the rounds a little bit in historic. We'll be interested to see if this deck with Obosh is still a thing and still playable after they make a sweeping change to companions on Monday. Kind of just like in the dark, hoping that content like this is still going to be relevant come Monday's changes. So one of the things that's really nice about this deck is both the adventure cards and Lookout's Dispersal here allow us to play around Obosh's drawback in a really elegant way. A Wizard's Retort, too, I suppose. This can really be a two-mana spell. So, like, normally the big drawback to a card like Obosh here is you, you don't get to play two-mana spells, so it's a little bit harder to curve out. However, because all of these technically have converted mana costs of three but they have the ability to be played for two mana. They really allow us to fill out our curve nicely while still gaining access to Obosh to double up our damage on our threats and just have an additional threat in the in the mid to late game. Now this is this is uh updating commands there yep this is um there's actually a chance i don't say this very often but there's actually a small chance to stick as too many lands in it so there's 20 24 lands the way i have it built here we also have four copies of opt that being said we are guaranteed to curve out all the way up to obosh in every single game so we always have our companion so i think there's something to be said for playing slightly more lands than i would in a deck with a curve like this on average um maybe maybe uh, actually, you know what? Before we start, let's try let's try this. I'm gonna add a lonely sandbar, and I'm gonna add a lonely sandbar in a cycle mountain, and see see how those feel. Let's do let's do that. I think there's a chance for one to two lands too many, and playing a couple of cycle lands instead makes a lot of sense. I think. We're playing we're gonna be playing on the ladder god bless we have a historic ladder we can make changes to the deck in between the cycle the cycle lands are good especially the one mana cycle lands in this format are a good thing to like include when you're not quite sure what um how many lands you want because like okay if you draw the cycle land you need it to be a land you play it a land if you don't need it to be a land you just like turn it into a different card right Hey, Ad Dauzium Philadelphia. Thanks for the 28 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, sounds great. And this uh, this Lonely Sandbar could go either way in terms of uh, being a spell or a land, right? Worth noting here that uh, Gitu Love Runner is a wizard, not a pirate, so we will not, unfortunately, have Lookout's Dispersal up on onto here. It's fine. We'll be able to stomp something. Morning time, Lord. Love the stream and your contents made me realize my love for the game again. Your stream recommended me by friends from Mexico and I haven't stopped watching. Keep it up. Hey, Hugh man. Welcome to Oaklandia. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. Okie doke. That's a Sarah Ascendant. So I think actually I don't really need to kill this right away, right? However, there is some appeal to killing it to using all of my mana this turn. Nope, the chat chat's very much in sub mode. Dirty digits. Is Runeterra a one shot sponsor stream? It is. So for people that aren't familiar, I've talked about I'm pretty transparent with how my I think I want a removal spell here. I'm pretty transparent with how my business stuff ends up working out a lot of the time. Um the Runeterra sponsorship today is through what's called the Twitch Bounty Board, which basically developers post okay. Um, this is, uh, this is their game or this is their product that they want you to advertise. Like, the upload video that we played the other day was through that, too. Hey, Ravy Boy, thanks for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And actually, worth noting here, getting really punished for this being a lonely sandbar. Had this been just an island that I cut moments before, we would have been able to hold up a counterspell for this and, like, not have this pride make get down. And now I, like, need to opt and find Brazen Borrower or Lightning Strike right away here. We're basically gonna be dead. All right, Wizards Lightning will do two. That'll that'll do, pig. That'll do.
Yeah, nobody, nobody in chat has not had a sub icon next to their name. Uh, 30, 30 digits. Morning, pow. So we'll stomp Healer's Hawk here, then these two will trade. Opponent, opponent's mono white deck tends to be a critical mass deck, so getting these one for one exchange with them I think tends to be profitable for us. Heliod coming down is a little bit worrying because it means all of their slightly weaker payoffs are going to be extra scary because they get bigger quicker. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know, digits. The fact, the fact that we like had this lonely sandbar come into play tapped, and then the rest of these things came into the the fact that the fact that this lonely sandbar came into play tapped, and then we kind of just like played from behind the entire time after that has felt really bad. Our counter spells have been super awkward because of that. Maybe I'm supposed to Wizards Retort that, since Retort cost me three at the moment. Probably the case. Uh, Brazen Bar actually sounds excellent. Not only is it a flash threat, but being able to bounce stuff sounds reasonable. Although I guess I just... <sighs> All right, I guess I guess we're I guess we're tapping out for this since I accidentally clicked through and attacked with both of them there. Obviously, should have attacked with only one of them. This gives them a chance to stick another threat here, though, which probably means we're dead. Born in Chez. Thanks for the two months. Hope you're staying safe out there. Oh, you know. Maybe instead of playing Bone Crusher Giant there, I'm supposed to Brazen Bar or this. Seems appropriate. The Giant Killer is killing Bone Crusher Giant. We might, we might actually run them down here, huh? If I do this, I get to smack them for four. Worth noting that Lonely Sandbar being a land, big deal here. It was a little awkward that it ended up coming to play tap for us, but definitely happy that that was a land that game. Alright, I think we're trimming some of our counter spells here. Definitely want to bring in these copies of Shock. I don't have a ton of cards for matchup like this, but I also feel like our main deck's pretty okay here between these eight removal spells that Brazen Borrower's tempo as well. I'm going to go ahead and trim a Lookout Dispersal. I'm going to trim the Retort. This is a little bit easier to cast. Hey, Zach, let's get your sword to go with that shield. Thanks for the entire year of support. You're having a good one wherever you are. Pretty easy mulligan here. It's a shame if, like, any of these were just, like, any land in our deck. This hand would be an easy keep, but unfortunately, with just one land, got to play catch and release. Uh, yeah, this is super reasonable. We're going to keep this uh, bottom spectral sailor here. I'm gonna keep this because it's a wizard to enable wizard's lightning. Hey Yoshi, thanks for three quarters of the year. Welcome back. Good morning. Well, that's well, that's just rude. Uh, 
Uh, I don't really have enough experience to really know... I don't have enough experience in the current modern format to know what that format looks like. Once, once upon a time, like circa two years ago at this point, shortly after, shortly after Wizards Lightning came into existence, I top aided an SCG Open with a 13-0 run in the Swiss, playing Blue Red Wizards. But as for what currently happens in modern, I have no idea. And even then, like even if I did have an idea of what was happening in modern right now, I wouldn't know, you know what was happening, you know, come Monday, because they're going to fundamentally change how companions work, so. If we just get our, get our counterspell in here while the getting is good. A game where whaling is unnecessary. I told the, sev several people have said the economy in Runeterra is very consumer friendly. Interested, interested to see how that, how that plays out in practice. I'm gonna go ahead and Wizards Lightning their lifelinker here and smack them for two. It gives this haste. Bad Whammer Jammer, thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. Sure. Can't recast either of these yet, thankfully. Just doing this. Nah, it's not about, it's not strictly about the money at the end of the day, Dirty Digits. I'm in, a, I'm in a spot that I can afford to largely just not take sponsored things for games that I don't really feel like playing. Large, if I'm, if I'm being, if I'm being blunt, the reason why I decided to take a segment for Runeterra is because Wizards of the Coast decided they wanted to lame duck literally every constructed magic format. So... As long as, as long as magic was fully holding my interest, I wasn't going to touch other things, but really, really frustrated with Wizards of the Coast ban list announcement last week. Instead of giving us actual information, they decided to leave us just hanging for an entire week. Yeah, yeah, if there was a best of three tournament today on Arena in a format that I enjoyed playing, I would 100% be playing in it. I really don't like I don't like playing magic as a best of one as a best of one game and I don't like and I don't like the current standard format so it's just like a double loss for me. Hey, congrats Sengo. Get it then. Am I going to enter for Godzilla lands? No, I have like eight different basic lands that I already like playing. I'm not spending $20 to get redundant basics. It's not, it's not even just Agent of Treachery. I'd rather play against Agent of Treachery than Tefri. The, pro the problem isn't strictly Agent of Treachery. It's Agent of Treachery in conjunction with a card that limits counterplay. Like, payoffs like Agent of Treachery are sweet. And I like big sweet payoffs existing in Magic. The issue, as has been the issue since War of the Spark was printed, is that on a fundamental level, there's no counterplay in lots of key spots. I also, another part, another part if I'm being blunt, and I've talked about this on stream before too, well obviously, well obviously I don't need Wizards of the Coast money, like chat, chat makes this is great, is, chat is kind enough to make this plenty successful in enterprise for me personally, to make this, to make this my job. I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't mind having a game like Runeterra or, or uh, you know, if when Artifact releases their second version, I'm going to poke at that again too. Because, like, it does make me feel slightly bad. Not even slightly bad. It makes me feel bad that Wizards of the Coast dislikes me as a person. That 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 they that they refuse to work with me regardless of what I do. So if there's if there's an opportunity to branch out some of my content into other places where that might not be the case with the company behind it, it wouldn't maybe wouldn't be a terrible thing for me personally. Maybe I'm supposed to stomp their face there. And burial rates in the bane. I like raid and I play an incredible amount of raid. It doesn't make a very good it's not a very good stream game to stream though. A lot of a lot of that game is like idle grinding. Hey Levin, thanks for the quarter of year. I appreciate it. Welcome back. You know like unburial rates of fiend artisan? I wonder what's in their hand. They didn't have any payoff last turn? Or any enabler? I said this while we were waiting for the stream to start, but you've ruined other magic streams for me. I've tried to watch like eight others and I just can't. We do we do set the bar in terms of organization higher than most achieve. Yeah, I think I'm in fourth right here. I think I want to play an untapped land here because the potential to like lookouts dispersal plus stomp or like play play brazen borrower plus wizards lightning here although I don't have a wizard right so this is going to cost three they could like they're sitting on a bunch of cards here so like I wouldn't be super surprised if this just eats it here at end of turn and perhaps I'm supposed to wait Till I get to five mana to play this out because of that. Although if this just eats it, I might just untap and play the Obosh. But they could realistically have two two removal spells, I suppose. Maybe, maybe I'm supposed to wait to play this till I get in a bigger bigger swing than this. So here's, here's the thing, Luzzy, and my, what I'm about to say is definitely biased by the fact that I'm going to take, I'm going to take some of their money to play their game today, but like at, at a certain, at a certain point, what's, what's the threshold where like you boycott companies based on things they've done where you think it's not okay, right? So like Riot's had issues in the past where their employees did a walkout. But my understanding is the last time they had an issue like that was well over a year ago, right? And like, there's a lot of people that work at companies like Riot that like are good, are good, reasonable people. I know a lot of people from the magic community that like have jobs there working on games like Runeterra, right? So like, well, I definitely think there's truth, there's truth to avoiding companies avoiding companies that like do bad things and treat their employees poorly at at what point do you say like okay like they've tried to make an effort to change and there's people working there that like are people that I like and people I would like to support 
in the work that they're doing. So, like, I... Like, and like I said, like, I'm getting paid for the uh, Rune Terror segment today, so there's definitely bias on my part here. Everybody has bias, but, like, what is that line generically where, like, okay, they had a problem, and they made an effort to try and change that problem. So, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think that's an interesting, I think that's an interesting discussion to have. I don't really know what our opponent's deck is doing. Um, it feels like Bone Crusher Giant is probably not going to kill a lot of their stuff. I kind of feel like I want some extra counter spells here because they're doing graveyard stuff, which makes me think they probably have bigger things to floop into play. I'm going to bring in the two Ionized and a couple of Disputes, even though they're not a blue deck, just like Boarded Dispute is bad mana leak here, bad cancel. Yeah, see, it's great. I don't understand what you mean, Zach. Can you articulate? I think that statement gets nullified by hardline stance in the past. Can you be more specific? Your statement there is vague, and I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, how do you how do you actually know that from an outside third party perspective, Jareth? Like, my my assumption would be like if there was an issue and their employees walked out over an issue once, like it that would have happened again and there would be more demonstrations like that if things hadn't actually changed. I don't know. You want to talk about morals and ethics? Like, okay, don't don't shop anywhere that doesn't pay their employees a living wage. Where are you gonna get your groceries from? Maybe I should have played Lava Runner there because I can still hold up Wizard's Retort. That's probably the case. <laughs> ain't that, ain't that the truth? There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Do I... So I could hold up the activation on this. However, it feels likely that they're going to give me something to Wizards Retort next turn. So I think I'd rather just play my threat out and pass. Thanks for the 10 months. So here, I appreciate that. Welcome back. Um, 
think I'm letting that one resolve and then just Wizards Lightning it. I think that's the plan. And obviously I should have done that at their end of turn, so that way I didn't have to shock in here to draw a Spectral Sailor. There's a bit of a mistake on my part there. If you think, if you think prison labor is anything other than awful, I'd encourage you to watch the last week tonight segment on it. Uh, John Oliver's a great plug in general. His content tends to be, tends to be very well done. Huh? I think we're just sitting on Obosh again here because with Spectral Sailor in play, if they don't give us something to look out's dispersal, I get to just draw a card. So like passing with my mana up here isn't terrible. It's like I'm either gonna get to use this or I'm gonna get to draw. The other thing, the other, the other side of the coin too is something, something I've thought about that, you know, kind of goes back to the no ethical consumption under capitalism. You know, talk about boycotting places that treat their employees well or not. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Like, big, a big part of, a big part of the reason why I'm able to do this as a job here is because people have Amazon Prime, right? is again kind of goes back kind of goes back to that <laughs> amazon pays a living wage their warehouse conditions are um let's be kind and say they are less than ideal let's let's be extra kind and say amazon warehouse conditions are less than ideal Yes, most websites run on Amazon Web Services. It's like, have people have people watched The Good Place? If you haven't watched The Good Place, it is it's really good. And like one of one of the core parts of the show. I guess I've tr it's kind of spoilers to talk about it, but like it's it's really well done. It's really well done. Uh, I mean, $17 an hour being a good wage or not really depends on where you live. Part of, part of the problem, part of the problem, um, with, part of the problem with the United States is we try to push so much legislation through, like it's supposed to be this one size fits all type thing. And like in reality, different countries, different states are often like different countries in other parts of the world. Like what, what constitutes a reasonable living wage in, you know, the cornfields in Illinois where I live is honestly different than Chicago, right? Like to do a job... If, if I wasn't a meme, the wage I would expect to do software development where I live in central Illinois is very different than the, the wage I would expect to do the same job in Chicago even. And those it's like, that's a two hour drive, right? Not, not to even begin to compare it to the wage I would expect in New York or San Francisco or Seattle. Regazoo, thanks for 17 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around.
The Lookout's Dispersal is less resource efficient here, but there's a chance this card starts to draw dead as the game goes long, so I think I want to get get my one for one with it while the getting is good. Your wife and I each make $15 an hour. We own our own home, have two used cars less than five years old, and we have a kid, and we put money into saving for our kids' college. Yep. Yeah, minimum minimum wage on the federal level is just like a whole, whole other bag of worms. There's a lot of issues with it. Interesting on the opponent's deck. So we've seen a lot of things that make me think maybe they're a control deck. But then we see Spell Pierce here, which makes me think, okay, maybe there's something more tempo-y that just doesn't have creature threats here. Yeah, there's a lot of good, a lot of good pin stuff in the raid channel. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Luris, Luris makes me think they're probably on something tempo-y that just hasn't drawn creatures. That's definitely what it what it feels like, but they're also playing a bruise, so sure. Yeah, that's that's another thing. When when people who live in other countries hear about hear about some of the wages people in the United States make, they often sound very high. And then you have to realize that like, in order to like not risk going bankrupt in the United States, you have to like make several thousand dollars per month extra to pay for health insurance. Or that's just like included in any other any other first world country. You still have twenty three months space ace. If you, if you combine what my wife pays for our insurance out of her check every week with what her company pays for our family's insurance out of their check each week, the health insurance my family has is like something like $30,000 per year. And obviously we don't pay $30,000 a year personally. Her, her work pays for a significant chunk of that. And we're very fortunate to have that. A lot, a lot of people are not that fortunate. At at one point when, at one point when this was like like I had been doing this as a job for a little over a year and it seemed like it was going to be fairly steady, we talked about the possibility of having this be our only income, and we looked into what it would cost to have comparable health insurance as someone who's self-employed, and it ended up would cost us like two to three thousand dollars per month, which this job does not make enough to cover that plus everything else we we need to live. Well, we're we're very fortunate, Space Ace, in that we don't pay the entirety of that thirty thousand. So her her job has good benefits. So I think our our out of pocket costs I think are somewhere somewhere under like six hundred bucks a month to have that. And her her job one of the benefits of it is that they pay a significant portion of it. Well, they can't play, they can't play Shark Typhoon, right? Because Shark Typhoon breaks Luris' thing. You pay over $700 a month for a, and you're a healthy 31-year-old single man. Yep. That's cost you that much since you were 26. Yep. So I have five, six, this is land number seven. So I'm going to shock this in. So that way I can pay for to draw and still play an Ionize or play Retort plus Lightning. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly, Rosa. People, people who, every time... Every time someone repeats the choice in healthcare line with regards to the United States, there's a healthcare CEO out there that just gets tingles in their spine. They're just like, ooh, ooh, they're buying into the FUD, ooh.
Now, if they have a Spell Pierce or a Quench here, they get to counter my Ionize on their Lurus. Yeah, it looks like they are a blue-black tempo deck that just kept a hand without any threats in it. I just do this, right? And just, like, smack them for 10? Do I? No, nah, I'm just going to smack them for 5 and play 2 Storm Tamers, I think. Yeah, the, the other part, just for, just a, just one last point of the American healthcare system for people that don't understand. When I mentioned that $30,000 a year cost, that $30,000 a year doesn't actually pay for healthcare costs until I meet my deductible. So it covers some things like prescriptions, but like, let's say one of my kids or a family member gets hurt and we go to the hospital, we have to pay another $5,000 per person when we go to the hospital to actually use that health insurance that we pay $30,000 a year for. So it's, it's not like you just pay that 30 grand and that's it, you're covered, that's your cost for the year. It's you pay the 30 grand just in case there's a catastrophic accident that would cost more than that. Dumping truck, thanks for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right, so... I feel like I want my shocks. Yeah, you have to buy the game and then whale in it too. And then like... When Christy, get, when, like, Christy, we're about to have a baby, right? So how it works with the baby is there's a $5,000 per person maximum. But, like, when Christy gives birth, they'll split the bills between her and our child. So it's going to cost us more than $5,000 to have, to have Haley, because there will be expenses under Christy being in the hospital and expenses under Haley being there being born. And like we knew that, right? Like we we have money set aside and before we decided to have another child, we we saved we saved money and had that set aside for this life event. But like and again, we're fortunate we're, we have good, we have good health insurance. Like when you hear people like Joe Biden and Donald Trump talk about they have, people have health insurance that they like, we have one of those plans that people are supposed to like. That's, that's, that's what you get when you have a health, when you have a healthcare industry that's designed around turning a profit, not about taking care of people. I shared this before, but you live in Canada, and the first time my American girlfriend went to the doctor, she had to pay $80 out of pocket because she wasn't a citizen. I was shocked she had to pay, and she was shocked it was so cheap. Yeah. It cost us $150 in Canada because we sprung for cable in the room so the wife didn't get bored. <laughs> oh. Yeah, of course, of course, Lizzie. Like I'm I'm not like there's there's a reason why there's a reason why I'm a progressive. I have I have a brain in my head and I'm capable of understanding how health insurance works in the rest of the world. Like I, I understand that the American healthcare system is god awful and it's designed to turn a profit off of people being sick and using the hospital system. The reason, a reason why there was a Sanders banner up on my stream is the reason why I donate money to progressive candidates in lots of different spots over the country.
When I lived in Japan, I had to pay five bucks to get a wisdom tooth pulled. I came back to the States and had to get the others removed. It was $2,000. Huge regret not having them all removed over there and I had the chance. Yep. Yeah, in fact, um, I have all four of my wisdom teeth removed. And when I had, I, I had my wisdom teeth removed while I was awake with just a local anesthetic because it was going to be an extra $1,200 to not be awake while they had it done. So I opted, opted to just get the local and get them, get them removed while I was conscious. They're impacted. Brutal. You work for a union in the U.S. And the union health insurance is eight dollars a week. Except it really isn't. So you you pay a lot more than eight dollars a week for that health insurance because your wages are less than they otherwise would be. So, if your union wasn't wasn't paying for that health insurance for you, they could pay you more money. That's that's the reality of it. Like it's all it's like blood magic, right? It all all the dollars and cents have to come from somewhere. We can pop up into Mythic with this one. Feeling pretty good so far. Got a got a bubble match here, chat. And like, I I really like this deck, and I like wanna be excited about this blue red deck, but I but I also just like have the Monday announcement hanging over my head, where it's just like in the back of my head, it's just like, well, Jeff, the companion might not be playable in this deck come Monday when they fundamentally change the companion rules. So, like, are these meaningful games? Or, like, is this just something we're to get into Mythic and then, like, this content is useless and companions are no longer playable? For people that haven't been keeping up and you get most of your magic news from here, they made an announcement that not only will we have bandless updates in Standard and Historic on Monday, but they will also be changing how companions work from a rules perspective. That is 100% fun. I have a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and I'm sharing it with all of you. My fear, uncertainty, and doubt is directly related to the decisions Wizards of the Coast has elected to make, though. Wizards, Wizards of the Coast could very easily had just told us right from the start what they plan to do and how they plan to do it instead of leaving us stew for a week wondering... That's that's what they've done. They left they've left us sitting here stewing, wondering what's gonna happen. Fiend artisan. Okay, so it looks like not Winota. Huh? I think I'm just holding up lookouts dispersal here. If they don't give me something worth countering, we'll cast some ops. They, they can't mixed. They, it, it will not be. I 
Okay. Uh, huh. So they missed a land drop. I think I'm just playing Bone Crusher since they missed a land drop. If they play a scary three, I can likely still Wizards Lightning it, so that's fine. Opponent stumbled again. Not quite sure what they're doing. I might just click submit here. I guess they're a land war elf deck, so maybe against the land war elf deck, I want to preemptively bring in shock. It's probably not unreasonable. Play a little bit more to the board. Is there a precedent for Watsi to errata a mechanic? They're, they have not done that before, but it's important to understand that updating how the companion mechanic works is something they can reasonably do because none of the paper companion cards say on the text box of the card how the companion mechanic works. Whereas if you look at basically every other mechanic there's printed instances of reminder text on the card of how that mechanic is expected to work so that's a pretty key fundamental difference between something like companion and other things because the companion mechanic has so much going on none of these cards say exactly what it does on it So that, that's part of the reason why they have the flexibility to do this because this change doesn't render printed magic cards like to have the wrong text essentially. This is this is what companions look like in paper here. If you can I can hide my chat for a moment. It just says companion and then the companion requirement. It doesn't say how it works at all. Shock is actually great here. We're going to have to shock this fiend artisan. The thing they changed with Planeswalker rules is how you redirect damage to them. They also changed them to how their legendary text interacts with other things of the same name. So we get to opt plus borrower here, or opt plus dispersal. If we opt plus borrower and then hit a land for Obosh, we get to deal a good chunk of damage next turn in the air. The paper ones do kind of say how it works. It says, if this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. Sure. Kind of. Kind of. That's not like super well detailed. So they're going to get to escape Uro here. And then I think I'm playing this and then I'm planning to bounce Uro to their hand at end of turn. I think changing companions hints the mechanic will come in other sets and that feels nice. Maybe. Maro, Maro was on record in one of his, his uh, blog a -tog posts saying that uh, they were an Ikoria specific mechanic. And obviously that could be subject to change, but they were on record saying that. They did errata Big Tefri to be up to two lands. They also errata Hostage Taker to say other. 
So they have done small erratas like that in the past. That is accurate. This ca casual 9 life gain from the arrow so far this game. I'll gain three more next turn. If we can dodge a mass another Massacre Girl or Sweeper here, we should be able to dodge a ball. They're going to be dead in the air next turn, right? It'll be 6-12 if we draw a land for Obosh. They're still pretty far off of escaping this. They only have three cards. They need six total. That's a good good step towards escaping it. This also gains them enough life to uh, not be dead in the air if I draw the land for Obosh. Pengu Power. Thanks for the 50 months. That's a really long time. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Why did they errata Big Tef? They errata Big Tef because they didn't want people to have to manually tap their lands at end of turn. So they so that way they weren't forced to untap their opponent's lands. They didn't, they didn't want people to be forced to untap their opponent's lands. Meyer Triton here is incredibly good. That plus Uro is going to put them up to enough life that I don't have lethal with the Obosh next turn. But hopefully I'll have lethal with Obosh in two turns. Again, pretty much just looking to fade, uh, looking to fade Massacre Girl. I only have 12 in the air there. They didn't have, they weren't dead. All right, I mean, we'll take it though. Mythic is as Mythic does, chat. Mythic, Mythic is as Mythic does. I honestly wasn't sure we were going to hit Mythic this month, and I wasn't super worried about it. Oh, yeah. By the way, some people, some people were asking me if we were going to play in the event today, and I decided I did what I always do, and we try to run Hoaglandia as democratically as possible. So I ran, I ran a poll last night asking if we should uh if we should play in the arena open today and the poll was overwhelmingly against the idea of playing in the arena open so we're just gonna do our normal deck queue stuff today and then we're gonna play some rune terra at the end so i was i was on the fence so i decided to run a poll and the poll decided that we weren't gonna play Thanks for the 22 months, Fancy Penguin. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. By the, by the way, if you're someone that enjoys my content and you want an easy way to support my content, the Legend of Runeterra bit at the end today is a scaling payout based on my viewer count. So if you want to support my content at no cost to yourself, make sure you're in the stream all day today. Help boost the numbers for the sponsored segment. Check out, check out maybe a new sweet game. I've not played any of Legends or Terra on stream before, or or Austria. I've not played it in general. So we're gonna start with the tutorial and play through it. Develop what our figure out what our opinions of the format game look like. I've not done anything. There's some free Twitch Prime loot that will cash in, and then I if I'll probably put some dollars in so we can play Constructed. Uh, don't try and game the system. Don't don't like open extra windows or anything like that. If you just want to hang out on your main stream, your main, your main thing, I'd appreciate that. Okay, I think I'm going to shock this in and we'll Spectral Sailor this turn. We'll see if these Wizards Lightnings are going to be enough to keep up with what the opponent's doing. Okay. 
Yeah, I agree, Steric. It is a little unfortunate that we can't uh, get to double, double lightning next turn. Yes, and Legends, and that that's another reason why I decided I wanted to potentially revisit Legends of Runeterra. Um, they they updated their decision. They updated their decision to uh, not let people buy as much as they wanted. So I thought I was very critical of that decision because I thought it was very consumer unfriendly. And they they decided that they agreed with that. And they ended up changing that decision. My my understanding is Legends of Ruterra, they just had they just had their first expansion, and they plan to do expansions every two months. And they plan to do balance updates to cards in their game every, um... They plan to do balance updates every single month. And while, while I definitely love Magic as a game, I do also think that Magic's inability to be a digital game is one of definitely one of its biggest drawbacks. The fact that it can't leverage that strength of rebalancing cards like games like Runeterra does is something that's really going to hold Magic back. Okay, Bone Crusher Giant here is very good. So I can stomp both of these and still have a removal spell left over to address Luris here. Oh, Swim. His, uh... The, let's say, culture around his Twitch channel is strange, but he jumps he jumps between a lot of games. He did Artifact, and then he was doing Underlords for a little bit. I haven't, haven't looked into any Rune Terror content, but I'm surprised to see him there. A fairly reasonable content producer. Okay, so down to four... I think I just pass here. Do I? Nah, I'm just gonna play this. Really actually wanna draw an untapped land next turn? I'm officially in my terrible threes here's to more. It's the terrible twos. Three year olds are so much better than two year olds. I actually don't have any one drops in here, which is nice. That they wanted to play this. They couldn't get value out of it right away. We are going to be dead to a three ball off the top at any point. Really want to draw a land next turn so we can deploy second Bone Crusher. And still hold up Ionize. It's perfect. And then I'm going to start attacking them because we need to close this game out. Need to get this game O-V-E-R. Okay, and then we got to fade one draw step here, which means we're like 100% to be dead. And I got to fade one draw step. All right, survey says. Uh, uh. Hey, Gecko, let's get your sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. You're in a good order over at. What? Say what? They didn't have it. They didn't have it. I 
I like the the dead on board not conceding. Concede concede before that can hit you. Choice. Alright, raid cap melees in. Uh, I'm gonna cut the lookouts dispersals. I'm gonna trim a couple of ops. I think I wanna keep. I think I wanna keep a couple of retorts and an ionize as a way to have some hard counters when we get the late game in our low on life. Yeah, maybe they didn't realize Obosh doubles himself. That's very possible. Okay. Partially dislocated jaw. Hope you feel better, Dabware. Doesn't sound pleasant. Put a cap in that one. I am I feel like I feel like anything could happen with regards to legacy and formats and companions at the moment. It's hard it's hard to know exactly what to think they could do until we see the changes they make on Monday. Like I like I said, basically every constructed format in Magic is currently a lame duck. They're all they're all gonna basically fundamentally change in some way, shape, or form. We're probably dead here if we don't draw an answer to this Luris. Like, I bet we'll see them Firebrand or Storm Tamer here play Luris, replay Firebrand. And, like, if we find an answer... If we find an answer to Luris, we have a game. If we don't find an answer to Luris, we're probably just dead. Yeah, yeah, I originally did. Speaking of lame duck formats, I originally, perfect, I originally wasn't going to try out Runeterra, but because Wizards decided they wanted to lame duck all their magic formats, it seems like a good opportunity to try other things. A lot of, a lot of people I know that play a lot of magic who have opinion, opinions I respect have really been enjoying Runeterra. A number of magic players that I know that are very good players are working for Riot on Runeterra, so interested to see what all they've put together. Okay, got a shot here. This set with this blue-red deck's actually been really good. I hope they don't do anything. If they don't do anything to Companions on Monday that make this deck unplayable, this will probably be one that ends up on the website. Play patterns have been really enjoyable for me. I think if they want to trade... Burning Tree plus a Burn Spell for Obosh. I'm okay with that. Like a Wizard's Lightning or a Strike here. I think, I think that's fine. That's unfortunate, because now these have First Strike and I can't block. Oh.
Yeah, if I'm if I'm being honest, if if I didn't have if I didn't have a an impending break coming up because Haley's gonna be born at some point, I probably would have taken a week off here with their lame with them lame ducking all the formats. But because because I'm gonna have a week or more off when she gets here, I didn't want to do that and leave all these decks in the queue. That's very good. Probably dead at this point. So they get to strike this. I cap this, trade with this. All right. Oh, get the next game on the play. And I definitely think that... So, like, what you saw there at the end of that game, I think that's actually pretty close to the average of what I expect those games to look like. Because while we traded one for one efficiently earlier, as the game ran long, my deck almost assuredly has more lands in it than my opponents. We're trying to curve out to five. So, us, us flooding. Because uh, is more expected than them flooding. I'm going to bring in these Phoenix of the Ash as a bit of a grindy threat for the games that go long as you one for one each other. Yeah, so lame duck, if people aren't familiar with that jargon, basically it just means all of these formats that we're playing, they're going to fundamentally change come Monday, but we don't know in what way. So in terms of like making conclusions for is this deck I'm currently playing going to be reasonable and historic, I can say, yeah, it's reasonable right now today, but any opinion I give today could be drastically impacted by... The, uh, the, uh, the impending changes. It's still valid until they implement the changes, and that's fine. I just I disagree with you. I think it has very very low value. We're just stomping something this turn rather than playing G two Lava Runner. Want to stomp something this turn and then play a four three the following turn? I'm going to do this now, just in case they have a uh, light up the stage. I don't want them to get their spectacle for free. Bone Crusher is very good. Excellent two for one. Gets to kill their thing. And then they'll, even if they have a burn spell for this Bone Crusher giant here, it's still two for one them, right? Like it traded, it traded for Lightning Strike plus Fanatical Firebrand here. And it did two damage to their face to boot. Yeah, any, anyone who doesn't have a complete arena collection should not be crafting any cards until Monday. Because, for example, let's say they make the incredibly big mistake that I think they could make, and they ban Winota in Historic. Well, if they ban Winota in Historic, and you crafted... If they ban Winota in Historic, and you crafted Angrath's Marauders, you now have four useless Angrath Marauders that you're not getting wild cards refunded for. So even, even though they refund things, it's not as simple as, okay, it's safe to craft stuff. Because they're not, they're not going to refund you cards for things that are collateral damage. Is essentially what it comes down to. I think I'm just snapping off this Ionize this turn. Will Ionize plus Shock or Ionize plus Sailor? 
That's true, too. Yeah, like, they also just don't even ban things in Historic right away. So, like, if they do suspend something in Historic come... If they do suspend something in Historic come Monday, you're actually not going to get wild cards back for it for a while. This is a very good draw because it lets us kill Luris. Yeah, that's true too. Not only do they not refund wild cards on things that are collateral damage, they also don't refund uh, currency on things that they ban that you bought styles for. Hey, AJW, thank you for the 41 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And Harita, thanks for the two-thirds of a year. Morning, folks. Yes, and actually, we talked about that, Jake. And one of, one of the things that I'm glad they changed is I'm glad they changed capping people on wild cards they could buy in Runeterra. I think that was a good, a good change. And add on stream is a good reminder to resub. You're not wrong. Kind of want to draw an untapped land next turn so he's like GM Obosh. You know, I don't really know that I have changes I would strictly make. I really, like I said, I think the assessment that we had when we started, that like the borrower, bone crusher, and dispersal, like being three CMC cards that like fill out the two slot in your curve, really do a good job of filling out your converted mana cost in your early curves while meeting Obosh at the Prey Piercer's companion requirement. Um... The one question on the lands, I I feel like I feel like you want the higher count on lands, and I think I would play more games with the cyclers. Like this deck is relatively mana hungry. Like not only do you want to get to five for Prey Piercer, but like getting to five so you can adventure plus play the adventure creature in the same turn was also meaningful in different spots. And we do have four copies of Spectral Sailor in our deck. So Spectral Sailor is a card that like lets us use our mana when we go long. <clears throat> that's that's an interesting, an interesting thought. Maybe a red castle is better than this Forgotten Cave. It's going to be untapped sometimes and provide a little bit of utility with our dorks in the air. I could see that being very reasonable. That's probably, if you're someone that's into this archetype, I think that's something that could potentially be worth testing. I feel like our mix of counter spells was pretty reasonable. I liked four of these that were pretty easy to cast and then having four hard counters that were a split between ones that were sometimes cheaper and ones that deal, that deal extra damage. Yeah, that's true. This is a basically a plus plus two attack when you have Obosh down, which is something something worth noting. So if you're looking for a tempo deck and this deck doesn't get gutted by the companion changes that are looming come Monday, I think this will be a very good thing to add. I think if this deck 
will still resemble something playable come Monday's announcements. I'll probably add it up to the site. I really like the, the play patterns of what's going on here. Felt like a really, really sweet tempo shell they have going on in the format. All right. Up next, we're going to get a little bit... We're going to get a little bit controlling. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while we get set up for the next one. When we get back, we're going to try some Grixis, some 80 card Grixis control here. Be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. How's this deck compared to Mono Blue seems more vulnerable. All right, I'm going to give you a chance to articulate yourself, Gobo the Green. Instead of, instead of just giving me nonsense jargon can you explain what you mean by more vulnerable can you be constructive and specific in in what way is it more vulnerable what is what does that even mean give me give me some examples Took the Winota deck in two days from bronze to mythic. Only lost four matches. Sick. Get him. It lacks card draw that the deck uses to help keep the game on lockdown for longer. But it trades. Sure. Yeah. So exactly what you're saying there. And this is why the devil is in the details. So like vulnerable makes no sense. Because stop it with the buzzwords. This isn't corporate America. Like you in your point, in, in your own articulation there, you just said why it's fine. You're trading off the ability to generate card advantage for the ability to actually close the game out in a way that's very reasonable. So again, I think what you're doing there is this false dichotomy that a lot of magic players do where you try to force every deck into a better or worse than comparison with other established things when in reality the thing that makes magic interesting is the answer is it depends a lot of the time like it isn't just strictly better or strictly worse the answer is it's better in different situations or it plays the game slightly differently